Panama City Saints, this Sabbath we pause for a moment and we celebrate our mothers. What a great blessing it is to know that the Lord has blessed us all with a mother. In most cases, mothers are a huge asset and a figure of encouragement for many of us. So we just pause for a moment and we just celebrate who you are. You have heard the meaningful words of your children already and now we just want to toast symbolically and just tell you, Happy Mother's Day. May the Lord bless you. When will we retire? Never. Okay, so heaven regards our work as one of the holiest and greatest. You know, oftentimes men leave and they go out into the mission field or they go out to work every day. And oftentimes society view men's work as the best or sometimes they're not appreciative. But heaven wants you to know that your work is holiest and greatest. And if you follow the Bible, train up a child in the way he should go when he's old, he'll not depart, then you will be regarded in heaven as one of the greatest missionaries that ever lived. So keep on doing what you're doing, and I just want to welcome you and tell you Happy Mother's Day. I invite you to bow your heads with me. On this joyous day dedicated to honoring mothers, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude. We ask, Lord, for your special touch upon every mother who is present here today and those who could not be with us. Bless them abundantly and may the work of their hands be forever cherished in your sight. Lord, grant each mother strength, patience, and endless love as they guide their families. Let her example be the guide that would lead them through life's challenges and joys. May, there, may, may, may each mother's wisdom and faith be a legacy passed down to the next generation of mothers. We also pray, dear Lord, to comfort and support for those who find this day difficult, those who have lost their mothers, those yearning to be mothers, and those who have strained relationships. Surround them with your love and peace, providing comfort in their hearts. May today be a reflection of the joy and beauty they bring into our lives. We thank you for Mother's Day. We thank you for the gift of motherhood. These all things we ask and pray in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church family. Please join us as we sing, How Great is Our God. Sing with us, How Great is Our God.
morning will be living hope. Please join us.
as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 223, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
seated. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. Sorry about that. So today's offering comes from the disaster and famine relief. As we approach Christ's return, the Bible tells us that the crisis events will increase around the world. Emergency management officials who have tracked disasters for over 50 years confirm that tornadoes are touching down with greater impact. Um, we saw that earlier this week in our very area. Um, hurricanes are moving at a greater speed. Mass shootings continue to affect our communities on a regular basis. Seventh Adventist Church serves those affected by these types of devastating events. Adventist Community Services, or ACS, responds throughout the North American Division. Volunteers open collection centers to support those um, whose homes have been destroyed, support communities that have been struck by senseless shootings with emotional spiritual care teams, and deliver supplies to areas of greatest need in the aftermath of the disaster. Your offering this Sabbath will ensure that ACS is able to prepare, respond, and work in recovery efforts that take place within the North American Division. And this includes the United States, Canada, Bermuda, Guam, and Micronesia. And while the ACS is responsible for these areas, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has not forgotten the rest of the world and has another humanitarian organization that responds to events outside of the North American Division called ADRA, or Adventist Development and Relief Association. Please give this Sabbath to Disaster and Famine Relief Offering, where your donation will support both ACS and ADRA. We look forward to continuing our work to serve communities in Christ's names. Will the deacons please come forward? Please bow your heads for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this Sabbath. We thank you for this time of rest. And Lord, we know that all these things must come to pass before your return. And even though they are disastrous, we should hold joy in our heart to know that you are coming soon. I pray, Father, that those who are able to give, please allow them to give. And what is given, please multiply, multiply it you know, fruitfully to help those in need and help us to remember them in prayer, in our work, and in deed. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Panama City Saints. Is anybody grateful this Sabbath morning? We are indeed. You know, as I've shared with you before, I would like us to get into the habit of being appreciative of uh, being here in the house of the Lord. Would you say amen? amen? I would like us to not take for granted that the Lord has given us another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible tells us, let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I would like us to sing really briefly. If I were to sing with you, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Everyone, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Would you say amen? Yeah. Amen. What a wonderful blessing it is to have another day. And today is a special day because we celebrate our mothers. Amen. So in just a minute, we're going to be going uh, to take a moment for that. I would like to just acknowledge the presence of so many people who are joining us online, our church family. Uh, many of us are traveling today. We are out of town, but that's okay. I see many of them joining us today. Brady, we miss you, brother. Also, Adrian Moore, uh, we've missed you, sister. We want to see you for Bible studies on Wednesdays. And also, sister Silda, Ryan. Uh, Sister Rhoda from Alabama, Alexandria, and also uh, Dean and Miss Christine. 
We love you guys, and we look forward to having you back soon. We also have a lot of visitors in our midst. Uh, if you are coming to our church for the first or second time, would you please raise your hand for just a moment? We will hate to put you on the spot, but we want to know who you are. So please raise your hand. Just keep it, keep it a little longer, higher, right? Okay, so we have a lot of friends with us. So Panama City Saints, let's acknowledge the presence of our friends and visitors and guests that are joining us here for this special Sabbath day. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I do have a couple of announcements to share with you today at 2 p.m., uh, we are going to have praise team practice looking forward to the Gulf States Conference recording project. So if you are a part of this project, if you would like to be a part of this project, you still have time. These are very easy to learn songs. Our praise team songs come at 2 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. This is the last practice for the month of May. You don't want to miss it. Be here 2 p.m. Also, we have potluck. Raise your hand if you know what potluck is. Raise your hand. If you don't know what potluck is and you like eating and you like good food, just uh, join us in the, big, in the building next door. And although we have great food, I know that our deaconesses and our deacons and uh, our, our women's ministry had worked very hard throughout the week to put together a special potluck for all mothers. <laughs> So uh, and we have the great blessing that even if you are not a mother, you are invited, okay? So please just come and just enjoy this time of fellowship. As I always say, it's not about the food, it's about who? It's about the people. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's about the people. It is about the people indeed. And uh, today uh, we have a new starting time for our Vespers service. Uh, you know, it is a great blessing just to close out the Sabbath together. Last week we had uh, a very good time of fellowship, just learning more about hymns and how they relate to us. This uh, afternoon at 6.30, not at 6, at 6.30, we will have a program entitled, Mommy, My Dearest. I'll be there, and I am not a mother, so this is open for everyone. I know that we have a crew working on this matter. Also, uh, 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 two weeks from now, we have our camp meeting at Camp, Ala camp Alamisco. It happened earlier in April. This is going to be at Bass Memorial Academy. The Kins Heralds, uh, also uh, uh, Pastor Richie Halverson is going to be with us. If you have not made plans, I want you to be there. Glenn, are you going this year? Sister Sonia, are you going this year? No, just Glenn? Okay. Are you driving your bike out there? No, come on. I was going to tell you to, to, to give me a ride, you know? But anyways, camp meeting, great blessing. Be a part of that. Last but not least, uh, we have several spaces open for you as far as Bible studies. If you would like to study the Bible more in depth with us, we encourage you to come. Every single uh, Tuesday, Sister Sharon Oxentenko is here. She has provided now a link that even if you are afar, you can join us and be a part of it. Also, Wednesday's evening at 6.30 as well, I have a Bible study here. Be more than welcome to join us for that. Touch bases with one of the elders, with Sister Sharon, with myself. We would love to study the Bible with you. And that last but not least... Raise your arm if you have uh, a pinkish type of bracelet with you. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I want to see all of those bracelets, okay? And all of those bracelets uh, were given to our mothers. Would you say amen? amen? So I will do something a little different here. I know that traditionally our church has given out uh, a very beautiful, how do you call the, the red flowers? Roses? A very beautiful rose for each one of our mothers. But this year we're going to do something a little different. And if you have a bracelet and you are a mother. And even if you don't have a bracelet. Would you please stand and come here to this area right here. We would like to have a special word of prayer with you. We would like to pray showers of blessings over you. And we would like just to say how much you mean for our church. For the Lord. And uh, we want to take this moment to celebrate you with a special word of prayer, okay? So, look at that. 
how many mothers we have here today. Wow. Okay, Panama City Saints, isn't the Lord great and faithful? He is indeed. Look at this great crowd that we have here with us. And now we are going to bow our heads and we are going to have a word of prayer. Before I pray, I just want to read one passage from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 28 and 29. And may this scripture be a blessing to your life. It says, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you, listen to this, surpass them all. Glory be to God. So I pray that you're able to take this message to heart, that although many women have done excellently so far, uh, the Bible tells you that you surpass them all in God's eyes. So let us bow our heads and let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for the abundant group of women that you've provided for us this Sabbath morning. Lord, I can see how they've come from all walks of life. Each one of them has a different story, yet it seems that all of them share the same God. And we are grateful because you are the God of mothers. So this Sabbath morning, we pause for just a second to celebrate the sacrifice, the effort, and the many years of dedication that every single mother in this sanctuary has uh, spent to raise up godly children, to be a means through which your grace is distributed and bestowed upon this earth. So we pray for her dreams. We pray for their desires. We pray, Lord, that showers of blessings may fall upon them. And as all of us are children, Lord, we come and we celebrate them so that their spirit of excellence may continue to surpass everyone around them. May they feel the warmth of your spirit embracing them at this point and feel that they are not by themselves, but that we appreciate what they do and that we will continue to uplift her until the day that you may come. So we pray this special prayer of blessing over our mothers, and we celebrate together as we share with them, saying, Happy Mother's Day. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Don't go anywhere, mothers. Now we're going to have our children just to come to the front, and they will provide for you a little token of appreciation on behalf of our church family. And uh, if you have not heard everything that I've said before, pay attention to this. Please pay attention to this. If you are missing one of these presents, talk to us and we will find one for you, okay? We will do that later on, okay? So uh, here we have our children. Feel free to grab one. Once you get yours, you can go back to your seats. So uh, uh, this is just a way for us to say, we love you, we appreciate you, and you are a, a great bless and a, a great blessing to our church. So as you get your present, feel free to go back as we continue to enjoy this time. And three, happy Mother's Day. May the Lord continue to bless you. Let's move forward in faith as we connect, we equip, and we grow. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Pastor and Pastor Wife, uh, for doing this for us. Uh, you make everything in the church so great. Um, God bless you. Now, please, uh, if, you, if it is possible, kneel down. Uh, if not, it's fine. Let's pray.
dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath. Thank you for the privilege to be here in your church. Uh, we ask in today uh, a blessing for every single mother um, here in your sanctuary present. Uh, sometimes um, uh, we uh, had struggles with our children. Please bless them and give us wisdom to um, direct them in the correct path. Thank you for your love, your unconditional love. So in that way, uh, we understand the love that you have for us, uh, your comprehension, your um, understanding, and your um, love for us. Please uh, forgive our mistakes. Um, help us in the future with our children, our sons and daughters. Thank you for your love again, and thank you for this uh, beautiful day, um, uh, this um, Mother's Day. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I would like especially to welcome our mothers in the congregation, which there are many, and also the mothers online. The song that I have chosen for the choir to sing is entitled, Joy Unspeakable. Do you remember when you first found out that you were going to have your baby? There was joy unspeakable. You loved that baby before you ever saw its face. There was such joy in your heart. Mothers, we honor you today through the song, Joy Unspeakable. You know, Jesus loved us before we were born because when Jesus was on the cross, we were on his mind. Now that's Joy Unspeakable. We'd like for you to sing with us at the end of our song. And if you have lost your mother, just remember, someday there'll be joy when you see her again at the second coming of Christ. And I've asked Sharon to read a poem at this time. And I want to say God bless you as you feel your responsibility as a mother. There is no love like a mother's love, no stronger bond on earth, like the precious bond that comes from God to a mother when she gives birth. A mother's love is forever strong, never changing for all time. And when her children need her most, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them every one for all the tears and heartache and for the special work they've done. When her days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on through many generations with God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers, for they love with a higher love from the power God has given and the strength from above. This is for all mothers, mothers-to-be, and those of you with a mother heart.
Sabbath, brethren. Our scripture reading for today is coming to us from Genesis chapter 16, verse 13. That's Genesis 16 and verse 13. And it reads, And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? This is the word of the Lord. La palabra está tomada del libro de Génesis, capítulo 16, versículo 13. Y dice, Entonces llamó el nombre de Jehová con quien ella hablaba. Tú eres Dios que ve, porque dijo, Yo he visto también aquí al que me ve. Bendita sea su santa palabra. Amen. One more time, good morning, Panama City Saints. Would you stand with me for just a moment? Let us have a word of prayer before we dive into God's word. Dear God, this morning we ask that your Holy Spirit may lead us to all truth. That we may hear from you. That we may be challenged. And that we may obey your word. Thank you for being in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Panama City Saints, every second Sunday in May, our culture celebrates what it means to be a woman through the lens of motherhood. Right? Families across the country come together to honor what is often regarded as the apex of womanhood, right? Some people may say that marriage would be the apex for others, uh, motherhood is. But the truth is that according to the National Retail Federation last year, America spent $35.7 billion in Mother's Day purchases. Are you guys with me? Does that sound like a lot of money? Indeed. $35.7 billion in Mother's Day related purchases. People from all walks of life express their appreciation to their mothers in different ways. However, despite the abundance of flowers, gift cards, jewelry, and dinner plans, you know, spa treatments, all of that good stuff, despite all of these things that characterize Mother's Day, a lingering thought remains. Do mothers feel truly appreciated beyond this day? Are you guys with me? Is this a one-day deal or is it something that permeates uh, the rest of the calendar? Do mothers truly feel understood and loved or do they often find themselves relegated to certain roles, right? Like being someone's cook. Like being someone's Uber driver. Like being someone's uh, 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 emotional dumpster. Do mothers often feel relegated to be uh, someone's uh, object of, of desire? Are mothers genuinely seen and valued beyond the spotlight of Mother's Day? Are they acknowledged as they should be throughout the year? Think about it for just a moment. Most of what mothers do happens in solitude. When nobody is around. Nobody sees how many dairy diapers she changes, right? Nobody sees how long she is awake in the middle of the night just to make sure 
that her children are okay. Nobody sees the sacrifices that she makes to ensure that her child goes to soccer practice, to piano lessons, to adventurers, to pathfinders. Nobody sees how many uh, tweaks and how many adjustments she makes to her daily schedule just to make sure that these things are taken care of. Nobody, nobody sees how many hours she spends in the kitchen trying to learn new recipes, right? On YouTube, trying to surprise the family. Nobody sees all of these long hours, as I call them, unseen hours, right? Nobody realizes her frustration when she feels that she could have done much more with her professional life. Because despite having a solid education, maybe a master's degree, she has made the conscious decision to stay at home. To keep the family afloat. Nobody sees her tears streaming down her cheeks. As she reflects upon everything that she has sacrificed for her family. And nobody sees her suffering. Because her children have left the church. And they have hardly talked to her. Yes. Our culture excels at Put in the spotlight on one particular day where everybody comes and tries to do its best or his best or her best just to highlight the mother's figures. But my point is, what is it that happens through the rest of the year when many of them feel invisible? Are you guys with me? Today's sermon aims to expand our perspective as we celebrate our mother. And this is my thesis. Although motherhood is revered as the pinnacle of womanhood, true fulfillment comes from being seen by God. Would you say amen? amen? You know, culture may say that, you know, motherhood is the pinnacle, that marriage is the apex. However, when you go back to scripture, you realize what really brings fulfillment into a woman's life, particularly a mother, is when she is able to understand and realize that God sees her not for what she does, not because of the expectation that have been placed upon her, but simply because of who she is in the eyes of the Lord. This morning, as we gather together, we celebrate not only our mothers, but we want to celebrate all women. Would you say amen? amen. We want to celebrate those who have, you know, endured uh, several miscarriages. We want to celebrate the resilience of those who are single or divorced and those who are raising children by themselves. We want to celebrate the courage of those who have not become mothers just yet. Woman, today we want to let you know that although at times it may feel otherwise, God sees you. His eyes are for you. And he has a message for you this morning. He's looking down on you and he sees who you are. Although you may feel invisible at times. You know, the Bible tells a story about a woman who also felt invisible. And due to the circumstances of life, she was thrown into this dysfunctional marriage, right? This woman was taking care of her business, doing what she was supposed to do, fulfilling the social expectation. And next thing he knows, or she knows, she's thrown into this love triangle. Does that sound like something good? Absolutely not. So this woman comes and is thrown in this very difficult situation. Do you guys have your Bibles with you? Yeah, let's open up God's word in Genesis chapter 16. Genesis 16 verse 1. When you have the passage, please just say amen. And if you need more time, please say mercy. Okay. So Genesis chapter 16 and verse 1. Let's meet this individual. Who is her? What is she about? What is this dysfunctionality that the pastor is talking about? Genesis chapter 16 verses 1 and 2. You can... Uh, go back to one of the pew Bibles in front of you, or you can follow along up in the screen. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had bore him no children, but she had an Egyptian what? 
an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my what? With my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. You see, a whole decade has passed between the moment in which God came to Abraham in Genesis chapter uh, 12. And he said, Abraham, leave your, 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 I'm going to make you a great nation and through you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Ten whole years of this family waiting, praying, taking action upon what they needed to do, trying to conceive. And they have tried, and they have waited, and they have traveled all the mall, and they have done everything under their power to make this happen so that this prophecy may be fulfilled. They were trying to conceive a child wholeheartedly, yet nothing had happened. Have you ever found yourself, found yourself in a situation where you have prayed? You have waited? You have taken all the necessary actions and yet nothing had happened? It may be a decision from a judge. You've prayed. You've waited. You've taken all the necessary actions. Nothing had happened. It may be a marriage proposal. You're waiting for this man or this lady to open up his eyes, right? But nothing had happened. It could be a job offer. You need to provide more for your family. You want to change a, a scenery. You want something different from your life. You've prayed. You've waited. You've uh, sent out different resumes all over town. Nothing had happened. It could be a situation in which, you know, you're waiting for, for a phone call from a loved one, right? It could be your own children. You've prayed about them. You've waited on them. You've reached out before, yet nothing had happened. And how about a notice from the immigration office? Can I get a witness? You've prayed. You've waited, you've sent out the documents, and nothing what? Nothing what? Nothing had happened. It was the same for Sarai and Abram. The more they thought about conceiving, the more unlikely it felt, right? They doubted whether or not God was going to remain true to his promise, right? They concluded that God's timing was too slow. God maybe was not considering all the factors. Something was sketchy here. Something was not right. God's timing was not on point. So they decided to take matters into their own hands. Have you ever tried to help God before? Have you ever tried to defend God? Have you ever tried to, uh, uh, you know, give just God, God a hand because it seems that he does not understand what I am going through. So Sarai and Abram finally decided that they needed to help God. Panama City Saint, what if I tell you that helping God very often is impatience disguised in good intentions? What is try to help God? Impatience. We claim to help God when all that we're doing is satisfying our selfish motives. Because we want it to be our way. So we get into the picture. We've prayed it. We've weighed it. We've taken the actions. But we want to go even further into that idea of, you know, I'm going to give God a hand here because he does not understand what's going on. So in a rather impulsive manner, Sarai approached her husband and guess what? She was furious. You know, I've dealt with a woman in my life for 15 and a half years, as I shared with you last week. Are you guys with me? And I've had many other women in my life. My mother, my aunt, they are very possessive and into, you know, what's going on with Eddie? He was the little one in the house, right? Is he getting married? You know. So uh, I, I've learned as I've dealt with women in my life, I, I've dealt to 
recognize the importance and the difference between pink and salmon. Are you guys with me? Fuchsia. Is that a word? You learn to understand that although for us guys it's all pink, for them it is not. And it's a, it, it's a serious uh, offense to call f pink salmon and salmon fuchsia. You have to get things straight. I've learned these things about women. I've learned that, you know, it's not enough just to say thank you on a text to someone who had a gift or a present for you. I've learned that you need to write a thank you note. You need to go to the mail. You need to do these little things because... Uh, there's differences and nuances that uh, we men do not understand. Are you guys with me? I've also learned that women will tolerate and mothers, they will tolerate many things if there's love, right? But they will not tolerate, listen to this, they will not tolerate passivity. Are you guys with me? They will not tolerate that nothing is happening. They will get very frustrated because things are just stale, stagnant, and nothing is going on. So when I picture, and I read the, the, the Bible passage, and I picture Sarai coming into Abraham, right? With this long time of wait, with this long time of prayer, with this long time of just taking actions, and nothing had happened. I imagine that she was furious. She was weary from waiting without seeing any results. Uh, and then finally she said with anger, enough is enough. Let's put an end to this. Take my slave and go sleep with her. Picture this. Abraham, an 86-year-old man trying to get to know a slave girl from Egypt. I want to believe that Abraham reluctantly accepted and he slept, slept with Hagar. Are you guys with me? So it was not shortly after when ultimately Hagar conceived, right? And it didn't take long for Sarai just to come back to Abram with many complaints. You know, Abram, what's wrong with this Egyptian girl of yours? She's looking me in a certain way. She has an attitude. This is not the way that she was to relate with me. She doesn't come when I, call, when I call her. She has something in her eyes and now she's looking at me with disdain. Something is different. Something had happened. Abram, what's wrong with this Egyptian girl? This slave of yours. Since she became pregnant, she's changed. Her attitude is not the same. So she looks at me uh, in this very arrogant manner and she doesn't want to follow my instructions. So Abraham did what any uh, 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 irresponsible man would do and he washed his hands and he delivered Hagar to his wife and he said, do with her whatever you think best. So Sarai st started to mistreat Hagar. Are you guys with me? You know the story. So this situation became so tense that one evening Hagar gathered her few belongings and quietly departed from Abram's household. And she fled into the wilderness. For years, Hagar felt invisible, right? She felt that her feelings were not considered. Her voice were never, was never heard. She felt like a property rather than a human being. Hagar felt that she was in a place where nobody even acknowledged her presence. Again, she felt invisible. Note that in the text, neither Abraham nor Sarai calls Hagar by name. Look at this. Verses 2 and, and 5. Sarai refers to Hagar in various occasions. And in both places, she calls her my slave. Uh, my slave, the Egyptian girl, the maid, right? You may go to any Bible translation to realize that Sarai never refers to Hagar by name. But it's not only that, but also the same thing goes with Abram. He never calls Hagar her name, but he calls her, verse 6, your slave is in your hand. The Egyptian girl, this maid, right? 
And this is the, uh, the, the biblical author's way to say that for uh, uh, the, the ancient world in Old Testament times, you know, uh, 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 slaves were more of a property or a piece of furniture like a sofa or a bed, right? They were not seen as human beings. They did not have feelings. They did not have anything that was important for those masters. And they were just relegated to be second class citizens. So he's never, she's never referred as someone who was worth to pay attention to. So while she was pregnant, she flees into the desert. She gets lost in the wilderness where God does three things with her. How many things? She goes out into the wilderness, gets lost. And the first thing that God does is that he finds her. Would you say amen? She goes out into the wild. She's fleeing for, from her place of anguish and, 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 and her place of, of suffering. And there in the middle of the night, God comes and finds her. This is what verse 7 says. The angel of the Lord, what? Found Hagar near spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the, ro the road to Shur. So you have this idea that someone who flees from her place. Is ultimately found by God. And God is able to understand where she's at. So here we find this mother on the run, right? The mother on the run. Trying to stay away. Fleeing into the desert. Because of the burden that she felt. The mistreatment. The, the, the unappreciation. Yet God came to her aid. Uh, he found her in the middle of her distress. I remember that when I was a little boy. Probably seven or eight years old. Uh, you know, when you grew up where I grew up, you, as a little male boy, you, you do two things. You eat rice and you practice baseball, right? So baseball is like a religion for we Dominicans, right? In the same way that football may be something important for the American culture. Would you agree with that? So back home, like particularly in the 90s, right? If you're a male and you're growing up, you have to practice baseball. So part of the base, baseball indoctrination meant that we needed to go to the stadium, right? So my dad took me and my older brother. We went to the stadium. And it was uh, uh, a Sunday afternoon, right? And the most important, the two rivals, the, the main rivalry in the country, they were playing against each other. It was a crowded place. And then when we were going through the gates, for some reason, my dad thought that my older brother had my hand. And my older brother thought that my dad had my hand. Therefore, I got lost in the middle of the crowd. So seven or eight years old in a place filled with people. But to me, those were the five minutes much longer of my entire life. I felt not where to go. I felt that, you know, my life was coming to an end. And to be honest with you, it felt like a wilderness, right? And in the middle of my distress, when I was not expecting it and when I needed the most, I started crying. I felt a hand in my arm, in my shoulder, right? And when I turned, it was my father who told me, very quietly, I found you. So I imagine Hagar being in this wilderness, in this deserted place, having nowhere to go, trying to find herself some place to feel safe. And God comes and he places his hand on her shoulder and says, I've found you. Hagar. So the first thing that God did for Hagar is that he what? He found her. The second thing that God did with, uh, with this mother was that he made her a promise. You know, God made uh, Hagar a promise. Please join me to read verse 9. Verse 9 says, Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress. And submit to her. The angel added. Here's the promise. I will increase your descendants so much. That they will be too numerous. To count. 
What was uh, 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 Hagar's greatest concern? She was concerned about her child. She wanted to be this mother that was very invested in the well-being of her child. And the place that she was at, she felt invisible. So God comes and he says, I'm going to take care of your baby. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of your baby. He will become a great nation. He will be a strong man with skill and brave. In other words, God says, I will come back for you. I will take care of you. Go back to your mistress. You ought to submit to your master. Because you need to understand who is going to take care of you. Have you ever heard this song? Be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. For many people, it will be very uh, uncomfortable for God to send. Hagar back to the place that she was coming from. Are you guys with me? Why would he do that? Well, that was God's way of saying, you need to go back because you need to understand that Sarai is not going to take care of you. Abram is not going to take care of you. I am going to take care of you. Maybe you're in a place today where you need to understand that your husband your employer, the people around you, your degrees, your bank account, your accolades, and your personal accomplishments are not necessary. Those things that will get you through. God has promised that he is the one that will take care of you. Would you say amen? Amen. amen. You know, God went and found Hagar. He made her a promise and lastly God heard Hagar's cry are you guys with me please join me as we read from verse 11 it says the angel of the Lord also said to her you are now what you're pregnant and you will give birth to a son you shall name him Ishmael and this is very interesting here it says for the Lord has what has heard your misery. Glory be to God. So God comes to Hagar's aid. He finds her. He makes a promise to her. And then he hears her cry. You know, the, the name Ishmael, it's compound in Hebrew by two words. Shama and El. Like Daniel and Ezekiel and Emmanuel. The El ending is God. So Ishmael is God, but Ishma Shema means hears. So Ishmael in itself is just God saying that every time that uh, Hagar were to call this child for the years to come, Ishmael, it became a perpetual reminder that God has ultimately heard the cry from Hagar. You really say Amen. I've heard your cry. I've come to your aid. I've found you. I have promised that I will take care of you. And now I have heard your misery. You know, this is very significant to me because something remarkable unfolds at this point of the story. All throughout, you know, the Old Testament, you have this idea in which, you know, places are named after God. Can you think of Bethel, right? Bethel, it, it's a place, you know, uh, this event happens, uh, it, whether Jacob or Abraham or many of the patriarchs and the prophets, they come, something happens and they say, this place will be called whatever God, right? God fulfills, God reveals, God protects, 
God provides. Are you guys with me? That's what the Bible does, right? But this is the only instance with Hagar that God comes into the picture. He finds and takes care of someone. And instead of giving the place a name, this is the only individual that give, gives God a name. Are you guys with me? She did not name the place. She did not name the, the, the space, the location. He went ahead and, he, and she named God according to her circumstances. Look what the text says. Uh, uh, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who what? Who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Are you capturing the, the beauty of this passage? A mother who was un, uh, invisible, who felt disregarded all her life, not considered, unappreciated. A mother uh, who, who, who was not happy where she was. She felt just some sort of piece of furniture. He, she flees and in her place of suffering and anguish, uh, he go, she goes into the wilderness. God comes to her aid. God finds her. God makes her a promise and ultimately God hears her and then she goes on to say God you truly are looking at me and you are seeing me for who I am so she said El Roy in the Hebrew which means God sees me there's many names in the Bible you know you have Elohim God is the most high and is the plurality of God as well. You have Adonai, the Lord is my master. You have El Shaddai, God Almighty. You have Jehovah Jireh, God provides. Have you heard of these? Raise your hand if you have. Yes, you have all of these. You have Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, right? You have Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. You have Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. But Hagar says, God, you are seeing me. You truly are a faithful God. So Panama City saints, particularly mothers, as we celebrate today, you know, through flowers, all the pink that you can think of, through presents and gifts, through uh, a, a wonderful potluck put together for you afterwards through the gift cards that will be provided for you through the, the, the restaurants, invitations that you will receive tonight and tomorrow through all of that. I want you to understand that it doesn't matter how you've been feeling lately. It doesn't matter if you feel like you are invisible, that nobody sees and nobody gets what you're going through. It doesn't matter if your children are not returning your calls. It doesn't matter if nobody sees what happens in solitude. It doesn't matter if you just want to go ahead and run and go into a wilderness to a place, some sort of cave that nobody may find you because you just want to get rid of and get away from your current circumstances. Although you may be feeling that way, I want to tell you this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, that in the same way that this mother who was pregnant, that went away into the desert, this morning, the God of heaven have come into this place to find you. He's come to your aid and he's making you a promise. Forget about your husband. Forget about your employer and the people in your life. Forget about your children for just a moment. I want to take care of you. I've heard your cry. I've seen your tears. And I am here to extend my loving arm of protection over you. God is telling you today, I see you for who you are. And I want to save you. So Panama City mothers, as we conclude our time here today, this day, I want you to remember that God sees you. 
Would you repeat that with me? God sees me. God sees me. I want to give you just one moment so that you may consider your circumstances, what you're going through, and say, you know, this Sabbath morning I want God to be my Rafa if you are in need of healing. If you're in need of provision, you can say, I want Jehovah to be my Jaira. I want Jehovah to be my Adonai, my banner, my strength, my master. So I encourage you for just a moment to just bow your heads where you are, pray, give the most appropriate name to God this afternoon. Because I know that he's seeing you right now as you pray. I will dismiss and conclude with a final word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come before you this Sabbath afternoon to give you the honor and the praise that only you deserve. What a great blessing it is to know, God, that although we may feel invisible at times, although we would like to run away from our circumstances, you are able to find us no matter where we are. You're able to come to our aid and you've promised to take care of us. And I'm grateful, Lord, because so many mothers are here this afternoon. And those prayers of hers are being heard at this time. So I pray, Lord, that you may continue to uplift them right now. That they may understand that it's not only about this day, but year round. We want to celebrate the unseen hours of sacrificial love that they dedicate to their families, to the church, to you. Lord, thank you for seeing us today. Thank you for seeing us for who we are, not what we do, what we have, what we are expected. Thank you for seeing us for who we are. Thank you for Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. I pray, Lord, that every mother here this morning may come to the realization that although the world is broken and unfair, we still can count on a God who is our healer, our master, our provider, our banner, the almighty God of heaven, who is deeply invested in saving us. So I pray that you may bless our congregation today and our mothers as we are reminded of your presence in our midst. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen, amen and amen. God bless you, Panama City Saints. Closing him. Him number 532, day by day.
Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you today for the godly, influential, caring women in our lives. Some of them are called mother, and we want to ask a special blessing on them today and throughout the year on each of us that we remember the work that they've done in our lives and the influence they are uh, all around us all the time. So we thank you for this sermon and dismiss us now as we go through the rest of our Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Side by side we